and today we have come to commemorate our 2023 menstrual hygiene day to create awareness more on uh, menstrual hygiene management to teach the girls how to keep themselves clean during and after menstruation and to also support them with sanitary pads and also try to see how we can end period uh, stigma but most times we find out that some girls absent themselves from school due to a lot of reasons one lack of sanitary products one because when they come to school and they are stained people begin to make just of them so these are the things we are trying to see how we can end and that is how we have come to modern secondary school If you know that your face is very oily, use your hand now to clean your face. Uh, because we want you to look beautiful on the camera. Don't laugh. Huh? We are trying to show, we will show this uh, event to the new president of the country. I know that show is very expensive now. But don't worry, we have told the president that they will show it on telly for about five days. So 
if you don't have light today, you will have light tomorrow. If you don't have tomorrow, for five days at least, there will be light. Even those of you that are living in a, a paper, there will be light. So you will put on your television and then you will see yourself. So I don't want you to see yourself very ugly. That's why I say clean your face very well. Boys, come, you can join them. You can join them. Come. They are bringing the senior boys also. Come. Look at your girls are here now. Don't be shy. Hello. Okay, if you're not trying to and this school are the same, isn't it? At least even if we are not the same for today, and now we are the same. Am I right? Okay, the organizers are about to start this program with you. But, as usual, we have to give respect to Nigeria. And the way we will give respect to our country, Nigeria, is by singing the national anthem. Only the first stanza. So, Hello. After the count of three, let's sing the national anthem. One, two, three, go. Look for her. So far for her. Yeah. 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 
Her name is Mrs. Kenny. So I'll give her the mic to introduce herself more before we continue. Thank you so much. Um, Rohef, I don't like the fact that people are standing, but then we will make do with it. I don't know if you're happy to be here today. I can see, I can tell the excitement, so that's very good. So, um, can we, can we just, can we all just be quiet for a bit? Silence, one house. Can you people hear me? Okay, so please those at the back, let's try not to make the noise. Uh -uh. How many meetings are we having? How many meetings are we having? Uh -huh. So let's have just one. Do I have your attention? It's only the people in front I'm hearing. I'm not hearing people from the back. Do I have your attention at the back? You are not hearing, even with a microphone. Ah, but you're answering me. <laughs> okay, so... um. How many of you know about menstrual hygiene or menstrual health day, like we call it? How many of you have heard about menstrual health day before? Do you know what date it is internationally commemorated? Tell me. On the 28th of May. Please give a round of applause. So before we start, my name is Kemi Badamasi Braima. And... Um, I am the Director for Advocacy, Policy and Marketing for the Africa Bureau at AIDS Healthcare Foundation. We partner a lot with Rohep um, to address different issues, especially as it pertains to young women and girls, um, even young men and boys too as well, in terms of their health, addressing issues of HIV, um, raising awareness, information, education, issues around violence. So those are some of the things that we address sexual reproductive health, all of those things. So I was invited here to talk to you very briefly, and I'm just going to talk to you about not just your menstrual health, but also protecting and preventing things like HIV or STIs. Because it's important that you promote and take care of your well-being, and you take care of your health. Because without health, you cannot do so much. How many of you have dreams here of what you want to be in the future? Those people at the back, ah, you are making too much noise. Can we all just be quiet and walk together? Can you walk with me? Uh -huh, please. How many of you have dreams here? What do you want to be? He said he wants to do marketing. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. That's good. What do you want to be when you, in future? A doctor. A doctor. A round of applause. Who else? What do you want to be? Lawyer. Lawyer. Oh, I'm a lawyer, by the way. So, but we don't. Everybody must not be a doctor and a lawyer. We also want people to go into other things. What did that, What did you say? An entrepreneur. Thank you. We want people in business. A what? A journalist. Thank you. A politician. It doesn't. A teacher. You see, I like it when people. I like people when people say they want to be teachers because without teachers, you will not have the lawyers, you will not have the doctors, you will not have the politicians. Say, say a round of applause for our teachers. Somebody said a plumber. A farmer, yes, we need to keep eating. If we don't have farms, we won't, we'll go hungry in the world. So a farmer is also good, an architect is good. A, a what? A big layer. That's good, because we need bricks for our home. So, and that's to tell you that no profession is bad. So long as it's an honorable what? Profession, it is not bad. A brick layer is good, because without brick layers, we won't have bricks to build our homes. True or false? So everyone is important. But now, um, Menstrual Health Day, generally, for this year, the focus of the world was around ending stigma. How many of us know that when menstruation starts for a lot of young women and girls, one, it marks the beginning 
or it marks the end of going to school for many girls how many of you know that yes because they don't have access to what who can uh, are you for having your own tete a tete here how many people know why when girls most girls start their period they don't have access to school how many of, how many of you know why Thank you. They don't have access to sanitary pads. Mm -hmm. Who else again wants to give us another reason why girls stop going to school? Mm -hmm. Because they cannot take care of themselves. Because they can't take care of themselves. Who else? Because they have reached age of maturity. Ah, but the fact that you are mature does not mean you shouldn't go to school. I still went to school to do my masters even when I was in my, my early thirties. From even when I was in my late twenties and I still went back again two, three years ago to do another master. So maturity does not mean you stop going to school. You keep learning. Some people get their PhD at 50. So that's not a real reason why girls stop going to school. Um, the thing is, yes, who else has a different answer? They're afraid of getting pregnant. So going to school should actually be able to protect you from that. Who else has another? Lack of menstrual hygiene. Okay, somebody else on the side. They don't have the money to purchase sanitary pads. Who else? There's something else that somebody is, people are not saying. Menstrual cramps and all. Some are sick. Shame. Shame. Thank you. Stigma. Why does that shame happen? Because they are afraid. Because of what is saying. Thank you. So those are some of the reasons why girls stop going to school when they start their periods. But should that be a reason for girls to stop going to school? No. I can't hear you. Should that be a reason? No. A period is a good thing. It's, it's part of the biological makeup of a woman. If you are somebody who in future you want to have children, you need your period, right? For you to be able to have kids. But because there's a lot of ignorance around menstruation, it is the reason why, uh, you know, some girls stay away from school. Somebody talked about the staining, about the shame that comes. So we live in society where periods are shamed, but they should not be true or false. It's a natural fact of life. You're not listening to me. It's a natural fact of life, and people should not shame others because they are on their periods. Most times, what you see happen is that, let's say, for example, a girl gets stained in class. What is usually the first reaction that the rest have? Is that good? No. Is that right? Is it right to laugh? What should be the right thing to do as fellow students? you help her even boys boys are very known to shame girls when girls stain and so it's good that we have boys here but what what that does is that when you shame people for when you shame young girls for their period you make it difficult for them to want to come back to school you make it difficult for them in terms of their self-esteem and their confidence but as students part of what we are is a community and we're supposed to help educate others and support our fellow students, true or false. Even girls also laugh at fellow girls, which is not right. Don't call anybody's name. You that you are, you are calling someone's name, how am I sure that you don't laugh at someone? Let's, let's be serious here because it's a serious issue. Period, there's nothing wrong with periods. It's not a bad thing. In fact, it is a good thing. You start to worry when you don't see your period. Right? Because it could either signify that, what, you are pregnant, or maybe there's an infection or something is wrong. But once you've got into a menstrual health age, it is okay to see your period and you want to see your period because not seeing your period means that, oh, you may be pregnant or there may be a condition that you need to go to the doctor for. Now that brings me to the second topic. So the first one is collectively, we have to work together to stop period shaming. Even the boys. We have to collectively stop what? Period what? Shaming. What did I say? Period shaming.
saying is we have to collectively as a group stop what period shaming and even in our communities and our homes when people are shaming people on their periods you can walk up to them and say no a period is a natural thing in life we should not shame anybody for it true or false true or false i'm not convinced by your answer true or false no. so that is the first thing because we have more than how many million girls we have over three million girls who miss school around the world because of period and what that means is that when a girl misses school it increases the, the chance for her to either get pregnant to drop out of school and that means all these dreams you are talking about you not you not be able to accomplish it right it also means that she could end up picking up you know getting um, abused or violated sexually because she's at home rather than being in school to learn the school is also supposed to be a learning space for us to get information, to get knowledge, to get awareness, and to support our dreams. But at the same time, schools can also be places where either violence or shaming is perpetuated. But that's not the reason why a school was created was for information, education, awareness, and knowledge. So, when you shame the girl for her period, you are pushing her father away from the school. Remember, we have more girls who are getting the school than the boys. More girls are getting the school than the boys. So, it is up to us to be able to get the youth to push the father away from the education sector. Because if you end up having more male governors, more male presidents, more male ministers, I don't see your hands, some people are having their own two aside. How many of you are going to, I don't see your hands, this matter concerns because you people are also the culprit. How many of you are going to be committed to end period shaming in your school and community? So can you say after me, I commit today. I commit today to end period shaming in my school, in my home, and in my community. Say it again. I commit today to end period shaming in my school, in my home, and in my community. Because at the end of the day, you are all champions. You are supposed to be champions. Boys, you are all supposed to be champions for both girls' rights and boys' rights. You are supposed to be champions for them. Then another thing is taking care of yourself even during periods. Somebody mentioned about menstrual cramps and pain, which is true. It's part of the reason why sometimes girls don't come to school because of that. But the reality is that there are resources available to you that you can use. For example, if they always advise that when you're seeing your period, it's good for you to stay active. So whether you do jump rope or maybe you take a walk in your community or you do some mild sports, it does help to relieve cramps. Now, if you're the type that maybe throws up or you have fever chills, like I do get fever chills sometimes during my period, it's always advisable at least to get an advice from a doctor on the kind of painkiller to take to help calm the chills as well as what the pain it's also advisable for you to eat healthy because during your periods what's happening you are losing what blood so you should eat healthy you should stay healthy and then you should also learn to keep yourself fresh and clean true or false ah uh, that's your true like it's working on one leg. 
true or false? True. So it's about keeping yourself healthy because your menstrual health is also connected to your sexual reproductive health. Because if you don't take care of yourself during your period, you might either end up getting infections, complicating your reproductive system, which you don't want. The same thing also applies with using the right sanitary pads. Some people use cloth and rags, which is not advised. Some people use tissue. Please do not use them. They end up getting inside your system and blocking your tubes. Please don't do that. Some people, one of the cost effective ways is to use reusable sanitary pads. You can actually make your own sanitary pads. Somebody said how. So Rohat is going to come back with someone to train you and teach you how to make your own pads. You can make your own reusable sanitary pads. That's what some girls use, especially girls who are not able to afford the regular pads because they're expensive. They are able to make their own pads. And guess what? Some are also able to make and sell it in their communities. And they do what? They make money from it. So they are going to come back to teach you. But I know some of you have access to the internet, right? Some of you have phones when you get home. Google. Go on YouTube and check how to make your own reusable sanitary what? pads. And you will see a lot of young girls are using it to generate resources and income for themselves but at the same time making their own path that brings me to the last topic remember when i was taught what are you tired you should need to get out of the sun it's, yeah yeah we need to get out of the sun quickly. so my last topic really is not a long topic just how many of you have heard about hiv before Good. So uh, I am glad that you've heard about HIV. How many of you know how to prevent yourself from getting HIV? Can you tell us one of the ways? So abstinence, you talked about abstinence as one of the ways to do what? To prevent yourself from HIV. Sharp, sharing sharp objects with people because you don't know what their HIV status is. Avoiding sexual yes, avoiding sexual unprotected sex. So, um, part of I know as we grow young, as we're young, we think of things like relationships and all, but we always advise boys and girls that it's important to stay focused on your education, right? Stay focused on your education. Stay focused on studying. So this is a reusable pad that was made by a young girl like you. You see? You see how colorful it is? Yes, you can wash it. That's why it's reusable. You can wash it. It's actually more cheaper than the regular pad. Yes. Yeah, so these are reusable okay, pads. Like they are colorful and it, they are made by young girls. So one year, two years. Yes. You can use it for a year, two years. I decided to end up with What do you say? I okay, just put it in the same way. And you click it on that. You see the clip? Ah. Yes. Uh, that is it. You can make it long, so that's why I say there's a different sizes, different sizes. and different lengths. And you can make it by yourself. That's the thing. You can make it by yourself. These were made by young girls, so you can make it by what yourself. So um, I'm going to leave you all now. It's been very good chatting with you, um, having this conversation with you. But I want to leave you with one thing. Remember that you're supposed to be champions, right? You're supposed, even boys, you're supposed to be champions for menstrual health. Part of what you should do when you, when next you interact with someone from the government, maybe they come to your school to visit you. We still need access to sanitary pads for young women and girls. Sanitary pads are too expensive, so we need to make them affordable. We make, need to make them more accessible. But beyond that, even schools need to have 
facilities where girls can easily change and wash up. Does your school have a wash facility? No. Some say no. Some say yes. Does the school have wash facilities in running water? Yeah. Yeah. With running water? Yes. Yeah. 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 You can change. No. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. But well, let me tell you, the reason why every school needs a wash facility, it, can you listen to me? I know you love your school, and I know you want to protect your school, but the reason why every school needs a wash facility is so that girls can feel comfortable and safe to come to school during their work, their periods, okay? If you don't have a wash facility, you can't come to school because there's nowhere for you to properly do what? Change. So if you don't have a wash facility, when next you have your meetings with your parents, let your parents know and say, can you support the school so that the school can do what? Get a wash facility. A wash facility should be water. Um, you have like your water, your soap, hygiene. You have... All, and some wash facilities actually have sanitary pads that young people can take. So are you hearing me? Yes, when next you meet with your parents, tell them to work with your school to get wash facilities. And if you ever come in contact with a government official, maybe who visits your school from the Ministry of Women Affairs, let them know that you need what? A wash facilities. Give yourselves a round of applause and thank you very much. Thank you, Ma. Hello, Ma. Good morning. My name is Chiwen. And I am from Esther Telfit Foundation. Telfit stands for the Helpline Foundation for Families in Distress. Please, you need to be quiet because I, I am coming to talk to you on very important issue that concerns your life from now till when you die it is very important you listen i am here to talk about i'm here to talk about relationship and friendship how many of you here have friends how many of you here will say that i have someone who is truly a friend in the way a friend is with you how many how many people how many people how many? Uh, okay. So all of you have friends. Yes. Are they truly friends? Yes. Okay. So we are, we, are, we, are going to, we are going to address the issue now because see, every time that you are in, as you are growing old like me, when you get to my old age and your children have all left you to start their own life, if you don't have a true friend, it will be a very miserable life. Are you, can you hear now? Yes. I want to talk about this because it's very important. I, look at me, I'm not a small child. Yes. If I am telling you that this is one of the major, major areas of your life you should take to your please listen to me. Because all of you are, you are going to be mothers tomorrow. Yes. You are going to have children. And your children will grow old and they will leave the house and it will be only you and your husband. Yes. Now, if there's no one that you can call your friend when you get to this my age, life becomes really very miserable. And now you will also know that if you are making friends now and you end up with the wrong friend, that wrong friend will divert everything your life will be. If you end up with someone who can manipulate your destiny, change your eyes from what is right to wrong, you've also missed out of a very important part of your life. So in friendship, as you are making friends, you, you are not listening, you are not listening. You are not, this is very important. Because if you end up with the wrong person as your friend, the kind of influence the person will win over your life. All of you that want to be fit, like I say you'll be doctors, you end up not being anything. Some will even end up marrying people that they are not supposed to marry because you were not able to adhere to most of the instructions that the school gives you, that your parents give you, and that your religious leaders give you. So when you choose your friends, it's very important that you choose the one who is going to where your destiny is going, you know. Are you listening? Are you listening? 
Now, how, how, well, I'm going to, in very, very short, uh, two minutes, tell you how to make friends, the real good friends, and what you will be looking out for as you are even relating now. Number one is communication. 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 Who can tell me two different ways of communication? How do you communicate? One person. Thank you very much. Oral and verbal. How about another means of communication? Sign. Yeah? Sign. Sign. Sign, yes. Which other way? Expression, good. Non-verbal communication. So, if, why communication is very important is this. If you are communicating with someone who you call your friend, and the person is telling you one thing, and you are, your mind's eyes seeing that the person is lying to you, will you know? So, when people are talking with you and you are talking with them, it mustn't be what is coming out of the people's mouth that you will listen to. You are listening to the reason behind what they are telling you. You are listening to their body language, what they are lying to you. You are, are you listening? Yes, Please, very important. And when people are talking to you, you need to be paying attention. Someone can be lying to you, and if you are not paying attention, you won't know. So if you listen attentively, you know when someone is lying to you, when someone wants to lead you out of the path that is right to a very wrong path. Are you hearing? Now, two, when you are communicating, most of you, hello, hello, hello. Most of you lose the people that would have been in your life because of the way you communicated. If you, are, if you are not emotionally intelligent and someone annoys you and you get angry all the time and you are quarreling and you are losing friends, it is not a good thing to do. You can't always be, be addressing your issues based on how you feel. Hello, hello, hello. If you have a friend who has stayed with you for a long time and has been there truly as a friend and the person, and the person annoys you, please watch what you say. Because you know, what you say is very powerful. My angel said that it is not actually about what you said. It is about how you made the person feel. That something you said to a friend, the person gets home and she's thinking about it. This thing, this person actually said this thing to me. And then the person will go back and think and think and think and, and the person feels a thread in her heart for you because of what you said. So in times of anger, please hold your tongue, don't say it. Whatever it is that you say that will hurt the person, that will take a friendship that will last for years, please don't say it. When your emotions calm down and the person has stabilized, you call the person and say, Abba, this thing you said was not good. Look at what you said. Look at how you made me feel. Can you please tell me why you should go that far? You can iron it out and the person can actually tell you the truth. Because sometimes people say things born out of what they have felt in their home. Maybe they just go back from school and they were annoyed. And you came at that time and they poured the anger on you. And then you are responding not knowing what the person has been through. So if you watch... If you watch what you say to one another, honestly, it will help you manage your relationship so that if, if, as you are getting old, you will have people in your life. You will also know how to resolve conflict. When you bother, please, if you can't resolve it, find someone who is older and ask them to please wait in and help you so that all the friends you have now, they are the friends you will need tomorrow so that the people that are in your life now, you will hold them there and you will not leave them. These are very important part. Honestly, tomorrow you will remember this thing when you are about my age. You say, ah, this is what this auntie that was trying to tell us. These my friends are no longer in my life. Now, because of all the small, small mistakes I made. So if you watch what you say, if you mind how you feel, and you, you are, if you're always looking at someone who's not leading you astray to get away from the relationship, and you are always staying together, walking your way through together, Managing your situations together, unified, I tell you, you will have a beautiful future. I will just leave it like, like here, and then you can take it up from where I stop. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. Before we share the Sanji call, uh, my name is Obehi, I'm a medical doctor. So, okay. so, so I've heard about menstruation, how to take care of ourselves during our menstrual period, um, the signs and symptoms. Sometimes them just um, chipping one or two. 
So sometimes before the period, not only during your period that you feel maybe sick, you feel tired, even before your period, sometimes a week before your period, do we experience that? Yes. Yeah, we experience this. So yeah, it is very, very normal. You understand? And also, if you are so normal period between the age of eight to sixteen. So if your period, it is normal that you don't sit every month. You will not say, oh, okay, I saw I've started my period. I must sit. And for the first two years, it's really irregular. So with all this, I hope I'll be able to chip in one or two things. Okay, thank you very much.